It literally like top, top five rides I've done period for like the last, since I've been fat biking. I mean, and probably like one of a better ride than even the summer. I mean, it's just amazing. 20 degrees. I missed out. Yeah, you missed out. <laughs> not a fat bike. It's because I don't own a fat bike. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know if I want to own a fat bike. Might take away from everything else. Yeah, I mean, you turn That's the only other thing, there are two tap out climbs on the way out. Tap out climbs are climbs that are so long and so hard and so steep that you literally, you literally like Matt Slaple used to out. So a tap out climb, we just did a loop and there were two tap out climbs on the way out and they were not far from each other. A tap out climb in fat biking on the snowmobile trails is a climb that is so steep and so long and so difficult with sketchy terrain that you actually risk not being able to pedal anymore. And that could actually happen. I mean, it, can ne it never happens any other time on any other climb in a normal road because you can always ride slower. This, if you ride any slower, you're going to fall over. So you tap out. for that is I like to allow the other activities to be able to use the trail. So when in early November, you've got hunters out there and that goes all the way through to just about mid-December, <clears throat> whether it's rifle, muzzle loader, bow and arrow. So those guys are out there and they're hunting in the woods. And the last thing they need is a bunch of guys coming by in motor vehicles, scaring away the game. So I respect that. Um, and then once you get into December 15th, all the way through to April, you've got snowmobiling season. And the snowmobilers utilize not a lot, but a fair number of the class four roads. The ones we're gonna drive today are ones that the snowmobilers don't utilize. So that's the reason why we actually have to drive them because the, the, what I'm doing today is simply packing the course for the three Pave sectors for the Maple Adventure Ride. And I have to do that in stages because if you wait till the end, you could have three feet of snow out there and it makes it incredibly difficult to pack. So if we do it in bits and pieces, it makes it a lot easier because now we can just usually go out and do one more run the day before, on the Saturday before, pack everything out, let it set up overnight, and it makes it rideable. Every year we've had the Class 4 roads relatively rideable. So for the best riders like yourself who are in the group, you guys can ride. Um, but it's still, it makes it, it's a nice technical challenge. This is Pave Sector 2 in Vomar. It actually is on the other direction. It's Pave Sector 1 in the Overland. So the Overland, we're going in this direction. For Vomar, we're coming against this direction. And we've done a lot of climbing in, in, for Vomar before we get here. So this is well broken up at this point. And it will be just like this. There will be, so people look at it. If you're watching this um, and you're doing Vomar, this is what you're going to have. It's crazy. So ride a fat bike if you want to. Ride your mountain bike if you want to. Ride your gravel bike, but just know that this is what you're facing in the Pava sectors. It's crazy. A lot of people just get off and run. We have terrible conditions right now because it's about 24 degrees and it's been very cold overnight and really windy after a thaw. So what we have now is this glaze of ice over ball bearing powder, which is the worst possible conditions for trail breaking. And in fact, I'm not really doing that much because I am breaking through that ice layer, but I'm not packing anything underneath it because it's just, it's powder. So this is, this is, a shop done right. Mike, Mike Dunn, my, my good, good buddy, Land Rover buddy, biking buddy, he is a builder. So this is the way to do a shop right. Nothing really super fancy, but you walk in and he's got, he's got his woodworking area right here. But if you notice, it's so warm in here. And the reason for that is he's done radiant. He went the extra, fat bike, he went the extra 
distance and did radiant heat in the floor. And it is just a game changer, folks. I tell you, if I ever do a shop again, I'm doing radiant heat in the floor. This is Mike's Defender 110 that he imported from the Netherlands. So this he, this he ended up um, importing from there. He is redoing his whole transmission. He started out by doing his transfer case, had to do some shims and things in there, and then it just exploded into being a much bigger project, but he's doing it all himself, which is an, amazing. It's one thing to actually do like basic maintenance. Another thing to actually dissect your transmission, get parts from England, and, and put it back together so it's correct. So, so Mike, what stage are we at? What are we doing here? I'm now I am putting it back together. So this is the fifth gear that's going on. I replaced the main shaft because the splines were worn on the old one. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just in reassembly mode. How are you doing all this without presses and drifts and things like that? I'm making tools as I go. So you're actually like this. making things. Yeah. So he's making his own lever leverage devices. You're, normally you have a pro shop does this with huge presses all over the place that are pre-jigged that can actually just put it on there and they know they do it. Um, most mortals would have just bought another <laughs> transmission because they're actually not that hard to find, but Mike's rational he's doing people, it. He's yeah. doing, yeah, rational people, but he's doing mm -hmm. it all himself. How's your float on these things? Is it it's good now. Well, I, get, I haven't said it yet, but yeah. now I have all the shims I need. Should be in good shape. Yeah. Oh, dude, you would not believe <laughs> in the Wait, Northeast, what's this, the this weekend, what's, what's it begins what's this the Thursday. Today and it, starts. it begins on Thursday. So this weekend, everywhere mm -hmm. in the Northeast region, there are Land Rover owners doing exactly what Mike is doing. <laughs> and scrambling. Putting, scrambling to put their trucks back together to keep. And mine, this I This entire thing work. needs to go inside the vehicle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's actually ridiculous. amazing how small it is. It was amazing. Yeah, there's not much to it. You well, there's the right rest of it. That's the front of it, right. Yeah. 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 loop it through the parking light. It's not supposed to have the, the halo running without the full ah. light on. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe yeah. yeah. if you're floating and if you're not, I kind of should have brought the max tracks because then you can always pop it up. Oh. So we're going to get the max tracks because we may need some flotation. So max tracks are. are, are it's one of these things that doesn't make the cut because I only use them, you know, on rare occasions. Like, but if I'm out by myself, which I almost never am, and I need to be able to winch, and I need to be able to winch up onto the snow, these are like little rampy things that, you know, you can, they're, they're lightweight, you can stuff them in front of the tire, and it will raise the truck up. So if we have to, if we have to winch tree to tree, we can at least use these to keep raising them up or be able to get traction to back up. So they are pretty valuable. We forgot them on the way out, so we're gonna go back and get them. Luckily, we're all within a couple miles of the house all day long. Right there, at Justin Lilly's house. <laughs> and they gave me, they just said keep them. Truck, just with like a 31, 32 inch tire. I'm just driving like a stall. It's so much fun. I probably will have one. Which is amazing how they keep getting them. Uh, do you want me to look at it? No, I think it's good. It looks like it's not built up. Alright, walking into the first part of Queen Vic. Let's see if it's drivable. Peter's behind me in the rover. I'm gonna see if we can pack it down a little bit. Start the packing process for Vomar. Let's see. Let's see if we can do it. Almost there. We've done all but like basically this uphill. We've got to go through this little brook area, this little wet part, but we're going to aim it high because that's where the riders are going to want to go. the main road now making sure it's clear for Pete and the Bumble and he's got to make it over this gnarly mound here which you'll see he's coming down the hill right now so <laughs> right, 
So there, there are only two things that I'm actually afraid of while wheeling. I mean, I'm concerned and there's, there, there's a ton of adrenaline flowing, which is the fun of wheeling and off-roading. But the, the thing I'm actually the most afraid of are sticks, sticks like that. Sticks that will actually point back at you will you drive over like oh it's just a stick it's gonna break apart no there's so many vulnerable things underneath this truck like the locker lines the brake lines the coolant lines <laughs> any any number of, of electronic um electric lines running from front to rear that that thing can get lodged in or it just gets lodged in, in your in your drive shaft or something else and can just wreak havoc so always i always just stop it's pain in the neck get out grab the stick and people are like dude it's just a stick but it's good to clear the trail Number one and number two is they can a small stick like that can wreak havoc. Now we just try to like <clears throat> widen it a little more. Yeah, and just and just talk about the trail. So we got a lot done today, and really it was it was hard going up Queen Vic, but we did get all the way through. That's going to make it really easy now for the next time. It's just to get some snow this week, and there's going to certainly be more snow before March 24th before Vomar. So it's going to make it very easy to kind of keep keep layering that on there, so the riders should be able to ride it on game day. But I want to reiterate again, guys, <clears throat> wheeling in Vermont is not okay in winter. It is unless you're on private land or you're really selective, but it's basically not a good time. Even if you get away with it, and I mean, I have expressed permission to go and pack these trails, and in fact, we have to do that because um, there's no other way the riders would be able to ride it. But it's like, that's it. I, what I do in the winter time is I go out of state. I go to other people's events. I take this time to go to other just Land Rover events and catch up with that kind of world because I'm so busy cycling in the summer. So I just want to be clear about that. I don't want people flaming me saying, oh, you're, you know, you always say you can't go wheeling in winter in Vermont, but here you are at wheeling. Really not. I'm, I'm testing the vehicle, but I'm also um, packing those trails so we can use them for the bicycle ride. Otherwise, there's no way the riders will get through. The town understands them out here. Um, and everybody, and these, these roads are not used for anything else. They're not used for uh, snowmobiling and they're not used for cross country skiing or anything. And basically we made, we made two tracks now, make it easier for people walking their dog and things like that. So it's all good. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Peter's headed up to Winter Romp in a couple weeks. I'm gonna continue to train. I've been running a little bit, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll keep you updated on the trail conditions and we will see you in the next vlog.